just hope, dear God, I've turned everything down and I hope it's all good. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to crowdfund us so that we can upgrade the old, <laughs> the old stuff. The old stuff, yeah. Um, this is episode 222. Oh, fuck 222. 272. 277. Again. Again. Renewed, have we? Renewed, have we? I'm George. That's I'm Connor. Connor. Yeah, not that This Ross. This is D- Julian Bleach's fourth role in Doctor <laughs> Who. <laughs> <laughs> Uncredited Davros. Um yeah. and we are Nerd Bible Podcast, the pop culture podcast on the internet, the biggest one since uh, the other ones that there are. <laughs> the, mo- the 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 one that talks about movies on a Sunday. I don't know. Shout out to them over the co- the other side of the world if you oh, know who you are. The country. Yeah, they're over the country. Yeah. So I'm I'm on episode 48 of cuz uh, talk about yourself of uh, my <laughs> weekly planet uh, re-listen to because I've never fully listened to all of them. All of them, yeah. Like bits and pieces of the years have gone on, and then more consistently in the last three years, I'd say. Um, I've got to the bit where they finally started using Grab That Gem. It's because they talk about the Infinity Stones. Like, sometimes you just got to grab, <laughs> grab a gem. gem. That's, that's <laughs> our that sign-off until we think of a better one. Grab that gem, you guys. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's weird to sort of see it form in front of you. Mm. Like the jingles, like you, know, you get the actual theme tune, and then you get the jingle for um, what we read and what we're going to read. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had the letters on yet. I don't know how far into continuity that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Sunday movies but no, continuity. Is um, thing. One day yeah. we shall be amongst them because we are in our final. It's the final leg of the tour. of yeah. This old version of the show before we get our new revamp Disney Plus BBC iPlayer onwards budget. Onwards yeah, budget version. <laughs> um, yeah, we start with our 60th anniversary special. Well, to be fair, technically we do start with a special. Really That's good. Yeah. Um, to transition into the new era. We might as well say that we've got our guests, because maybe it will happen as long as the technology provides. <laughs> so we will be from, not this week, obviously, because it's not happened yet, from next week, um, obviously for three episodes in a row. Um, don't expect any news or anything pop culture happening. Cause <laughs> that can all take a break. <laughs> because they will be, I would say, probably our more conci- one of our more concise but detailed sort of more fun ones because we will be doing the three concurrent specials of um, the, Doctor the Doctor Who 60th, 60th anniversary tour starting with <laughs> the Star Beast Man the Star Beast David Tennant and Catherine Tate no, who's <laughs> guesting on this to talk about it Dominic G. Martin no, no that's <laughs> done the last <laughs> one first no who's doing I, I forgot the order Star Beast <laughs> What's that? I hear a voice. I hear a voice from behind the set. No. With our wonderful friend. Andy, from yes. We Andy. pay for your floor. <laughs> Andy, Andy Kemp. Andy Kemp. Yes, sorry. Yes. And Something then, came over me. Yes. You just got really excited about Dom, didn't you? Do you know what it is? You've, got, you've been excited about a new guest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited to speak to the boys again, separately, and not a three hour plus recording of the Dead Week. Session. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Andy will be guesting for The Star Beast, which will come out next week. Mm-hmm. Then we have. Wild Blue Yonder featuring Will Templar. No, <laughs> Everyone... you, you read the texts I send you. Yeah, but I mean, shit happens during the week. Um, Michael or yes. Will? Yeah, well, okay, well, fifty-fifty on that one. Michael, yes. Yeah, Michael, um, Michael of Silver Screen, which we were on the episode of the video game one, which we were so vague upon. <laughs> <laughs> really, um, really, incredibly vague. Incredibly vague. Go and watch it. Um, it's just a lot of. It, do you know what was really fun? The fact that I couldn't hear DK for any of the recording because the settings mm. I finally managed to get the mic to work on the, um, um, that thing the that thing program that, the program that Mike uses but I could hear yeah. everyone but DK so everyone was reacting to what DK was saying and I was like what's happening what's guys? happening but then if I switched my settings around the other way it meant I could hear DK and no one else so maybe I was in oh, some kind of weird, you know how the Medusa cascades a second out of sync <laughs> Maybe DK's, <laughs> He's on a maybe stolen DK's planet. recording space <laughs> is hidden in the heart of the Medusa Cascade. We don't know. <laughs> DK, get in touch. Because we'll have to have him on as well. Mm. Um, yes, <laughs> so Michael was doing Wild Blue Yonder, leaving the final part of the 60th anniversary specials. To Dominic G. Martin. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you mean? Hey, well, let's grab it. <laughs> let's record it. No, to, all right, to Julian Bleach. That's who's coming on. We're going to get Davros. I'd love it, Julian Bleach. Well, he is is our Julian Bleach, really, when you think about it. (laughs) Because we've been in so many of his universes with different versions of Will Templar. (laughs) 
<laughs> he will be talking about the giggle because we, we basically, <laughs> basically because it was the furthest one away and probably gives him the most time to get ready for. <laughs> Because his yeah, schedule yeah, yeah. is I see, I see. Um, questionable. I, the, so far, the only one that I know is definitely off to record is Andy, so we might just have episode one and none of the others. <laughs> um, and obviously, it's not just a trilogy, people, because the shooty yes. Gatwa era will start on Christmas Day, we think. Um, <coughs> yeah, well, we hope. <laughs> but uh, The Church on Ruby Road will be reviewed by us, featuring a brand new guest, someone that I'm really excited that we'll actually get to talk to. Yes. You can say his name now. <laughs> Junior, no, Dominic G. Martin. Yes. <laughs> Dominic G. The Martin. The wonderful Dom. Uh, cosplayer extraordinaire. Yes. Um, who's, if you've seen any of his um, 15th Doctor cosplays, like, absolutely Jesus. smashing it. I mean, the 15th Doctor is probably the one you want to cosplay as the most because fashion icon. Yeah, he's fashion Easter. Literally, some great jackets and a fantastic moustache. Um,. Much like Dom's got facial hair, so there you go. <laughs> That's the link. Our, the second best moustache in Doctor Who. Oh, no, Anthony Ainley. Uh, oh, the third best. No, Georgie. No. <laughs> Die, Georgie. No. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to speaking to Dom because it's someone new and it will possibly be in the new iteration, regeneration of this. Of so this, That will yeah. be in the new year purely because... Like you say, before, I just, we did ourselves. I just had three specials in my head for so long, and I kind of forgot about this Christmas slash New Year. And I thought, oh, there is a forecast. So yeah, that was why I was like, yeah. him, him, him. But yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. something to look forward to, ladies and gentlemen, because um, that will be in the New Year. Because as you know, we kind of have our set things that give us the time to pre-record them to have Christmas with our families, obviously. Mm. Um, so uh, we will be hopefully this week because I've got some holiday, and not next week. Week after, I've got some more. So we should be able to batten down those three. So mm-hmm. the order might change, um, <coughs> like all good people, things do. But, you know, yeah. like normally the the three that round out and then start the next year are obviously the um, the Christmas special where we talk about um, we don't just talk about Christmas in general anymore because we realise we'd run out of Christmas like Mrs Brown's boys. <laughs> but um, oh, shut right, yeah. Fuck Mrs Brown's boys. So it will be. I believe it's Connor's turn to pick the Christmas film. So we'll okay, be fine. Called that. Um, not in this block. We'll do because. The easiest ones to do are what's coming out soon and what was our favourite stuff of the year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the list. Yes, mm. so it'll be our top stuff of 2023 um, and what to expect 2024, which will probably be before Dom, so that would put him at the 9th of January, around Fair enough. then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just because that um it will we can give yeah the ninth would be the recording so it'd be released on the 12th because january starts on a monday how fucking amazing is that for you ocd people (laughs) oh my god my birthday month also starts on a monday i have my birthday on a saturday yeah huzzah good um but yeah so this obviously version of the podcast we hope will be changing into a more you can get the visual stuff on the youtube We'll be pushing more audio numbers and getting some more traffic. And finally, like we promised many, many times, <laughs> actually getting our head down and doing some stuff because um, it's it's a long like it's been a long five years. It's been very a busy long people. day, but um, without you, time my to kind of just video, sort of, you know, fuck mm. it, have fun with it, and we're gonna actually go for revamp. It. Yes, yeah. revamp, renew. Have I? We're like confidential, but now we're unleashed. Um, oh. But yeah, so hopefully Dom's episode might be the first of the you can the new era. watch it, oh. and it will be on um, a uh, another special service. special oh. service. Yes, special, oh, spe- service. <laughs> Ooh, special service. Risky. Okay. Uh, but in the meantime, we will catch up on the, all the <coughs> pop culture stuff for the next three weeks because we're not going to fucking talk That's about it. it for the next three culture weeks. Culture hasn't happened for three weeks. Culture doesn't happen from well, if you're listening to this. From tomorrow, because that's all that matters. Um, we will talk about the Doctor Who stuff at the end, because we briefly, you know, we have a conversation before we do this. But yes, what? Well, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. So so sorry. So so sorry. Um, I have some stuff. I mm. have. Um, first of all, how you been, Connor? I haven't really I'm asked been good, you. I'm good, man. No, I know. Oh, rude. I just walked in and he was like, "Right, <laughs> sit down, young man. <laughs> Tell me what you fuck down. Sit the fuck down, dear boy." Um. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah. I've watched the first episode of season five of What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, good. You're ahead of me. I haven't. <laughs> you're ahead of me. I did it and I was like, oh, I could sit down and just do the whole thing Do the thing rest. Now. <laughs> so where, but then it, it was like half 11 and I was like... In a quick no. ranking, where, where does it rank then? For, so far, good start. Based on one episode. Based on, based mm. on one episode, I'm going to guess it's season five, best season of all time. No, um, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. I don't even know what my favourite season of It all kind of blends is, together. Because I think one's very much a sort of 
can we make this work in a televisual format? Yeah. And then yeah. it's, oh, of course we can. Let's go batshit crazy from season two. And yeah, the elaborate yeah, yeah. stuff with Colin Robinson last season, I think was just so niche and actually just having a mini arc about vampire puberty. <laughs> <laughs> towards the end was fabulous. Amazing. And it restored the status quo, but obviously events had, you know, happened between these guys, and they, you know, he's a, much like Groot, Colin Robinson is a different character. Yes, yes. Like, it's a different version. So, will um, Mark Prosk play him any differently? Mm, Probably not. No. Because, um, no. It's nice to get back to that Earth, like, you know, the format of that stuff. I'm interested to see where this season goes. Like I said, after I'd watched one episode, I could have just sat down and watched the whole thing. Mm. Um, very, very tempting. Much like the opposite of Rick and Morty, because I've just not had the opportunity to sit down um, timing-wise and do it. I saw a fucking Barbie on 4K the other day, and I was like, oh, oh I need to buy it. Such a beautiful Also, I case. need to finish uh, my Christmas shopping. And something that will also might piss you off. I don't know oh, if you've no, it oh, yet. Oh, no. The what, Meg what? 2 is in the American <gasps> thin case and Meg yeah. 1 is in normal case. Yeah. It's the, it's the same reason why I haven't bought Star Trek. Um, Mar- Mario Star Trek. is, Creed 3 is uh, in the thin cases. For Blu-ray or for 4K? Uh, for 4K. Fuck. They're thin, they're thin cases. Tra- like, transition them then, but then mm. I'm not rebuying the thin one. Oh, I can't be honest. No, no, oh, don't. Yeah, just do don't. Just thing. don't. <laughs> just don't. And, and for once, I agreed with Christopher Nolan because he was talking about the preservation of physical media. Guillermo del Toro also piped in with it on um, Twitter X this week saying that at the end of the day, you sort of become custodians of these films like for generations to come because when stuff's all digital, it can come and go and they can like some things on certain social media, uh, not social media, streaming platforms can be lost forever and have no way of ever recovering them. Being so. seen again, yeah. Not as originally intended anyway. No. no. Um, so yeah, we are custodians. The custodians of cinema, that could be... That's us. Oh my God. Is it a new name or is, is that, that a, a rebrand? Is that a tagline? Yeah, is that a segment? Is that like a spin-off of this? We could have a vault. We could yeah. have a bit where we put something in the film. You know like yeah. how we have the like most influential films of all time? Yeah, 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 indeed. It'll be ours. We just call it custodians so of cinema. It's any yeah. Jason Statham film. Anything with Nicolas Cage, Cage in, in it. Yeah. Um, um, for me, I'd say Jake Gyllenhaal, in all seriousness. Anything I'd with Jake, say, I like Jake. I'd say Jake Gyllenhaal's films of <coughs> Co- Guy Richard the Covenant, Nightcrawler, and Life. Not Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Life. I haven't seen Life. Have you not seen Life? I have Life. not seen Life. I don't Life. Not know what Life is. Life is like Alien. Yeah, it's been to be, yeah. But it's more jokey, but hmm. more murder. Oh goody! Oh <laughs> you Plus, you've got gosh! A stellar cast of Jake Gyllenhaal, Ryan Reynolds, oh. Chiwetel Ejiofor. Yeah. Who's and who's the girl? Rebecca Ferguson, isn't Rebecca it? Ferguson, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's someone else in it. Oh, I don't know. Don't know. Do 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 do. I don't, I don't remember. Go and watch it. Life. That's another <laughs> life. life. That's a film I saw on a streaming service when I was on holiday. Mm. It's another thing I've got because I'm very bad in terms of space, like where we live at the moment. We hopefully, again, we might be moving in the new year, like into our own place, which will move the studio and will mean that <laughs> we are not, you know, our confines at the minute for this yes. room <laughs> would then be lifted. It would mean Connor would have to get to a new address, and the first couple oh, of weeks might be, 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 be a bit iffy for him. Might be a bit beard. Might be a bit beard. Big beard. Big beard. Look for the big beard in the look, sky. Yeah, look for the big beard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's another reason why I haven't, mm. you know, wedged out my old. Um, Film collection because I'm running out of places to put the Doctor Who stuff, let alone me fucking films. Same here, yep, yeah, that's yeah. Um, but that's stuff I need to, yeah, watch life. If you can see it on the life. streaming service, watch life because that's one of my favourite performances of his. That's quite good. Okay. Um, is Ryan Reynolds a bit more serious in it as well? Is he just stereotypical Ryan Reynolds? He's not Deadpool Ryan Reynolds. He's, I'd say he's free guy. Ryan half. Reynolds. Of, no. He's between Free Guy and Deadpool Ryan Reynolds. Okay, fine. All right. A little bit toned down. Yeah. And, you know. Not talking about jokes about fixing he's walls. Make, he's also making the jokes in the awkward situations, which I believe Ryan Reynolds would probably do if he was in space about to be attacked by this alien thing. Mm, okay. Um, yes. So the list, that's the thing. That's the reason why, you know, I need to get Barbie on the list because it's up there somewhere. You know, I've only just, you know, a couple of months ago, so- seen John Wick Chapter 4. Uh, so you, you still need to watch Oppenheimer, do you? Or Barbie? So you see, so you see, you've watched Barbie this week. I've or... not because I, oh, no, okay. I will. Is a thing of once my Christmas <clears throat> is out of the way, because you'll love this. 
So when I was, you know, when I was swapping over my, this is boring life stuff, which we occasionally <laughs> delve more into as time passes when there's less media to talk about. Of course. When I was changing my car over, finance mm. wise, mm-hmm. the old car, another payment come out as I was switching over and then no longer had that car. Forgot that because they're like, oh, once the fi- like financial agreement settled because it was the buyout price of that, you know, take off what you'd like you'd have left on your contract kind of thing then would go towards your next car so they did all that settled all the things got it on my new finance the other week we're literally like two days from payday i got back the extra one i was charged and had completely forgotten so i was like free money money. (laughs) oh my god paycheck and then literally i was like because it was like two days before i got paid as well and i had a bonus in that payday as well so i was like oh i could treat myself very well and <laughs> and all the podcast. Yeah. Or I could get my Christmas... I've got to get my Christmas shopping done first, guys. Got to get it done. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, I've been yeah. buying bits and like kids stuff throughout. You know, for the last couple of months we've been doing that. But like the last few things... I, there's just stuff I need to get yes. without, you know, worrying of... Oh, but I spent £300 on streaming software. <laughs> 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 or some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's there because that's freeing up a lot more things. And, you know. Oh, Post Christmas, the regeneration begins again, and Black Friday might look at the camera. Oh, so obviously it would, you know, it'd be a very boring sort of just a two <laughs> shot at the beginning, mm-hmm. um, until we can afford the space and time for more cameras, <laughs> multi camera setup. We'll have our own editors, and then we'll get that table that everyone has. Yes, those mics, and we'll just face each other, just <laughs> directly in the eyes, <laughs> into the soul. And then we'll get a um, Harry's razor advert. <laughs> Jesus. That works out right. God. But no, like it's one of the things I did wanna did wanna pick it up, but I've not picked it up yet. Um do you know what I have picked up? What have you done? What? Some news <laughs> oh. Oh. From Amazon Black Friday sale. Other retails apply, but check out the Amazon sale. Oh it's the week. Yeah. Oh, do you know what as well? Um the controllers for PS five and Xbox Series X are reduced. So instead of um this isn't even a plug, like well, ninety quid. Free. Yeah. So instead of the fifty five pounds you would pay for another PS five controller currently 37.99 oh yes yes yeah. that's fine by me because one i only have one controller um two i need another xbox one one so then i've got four because i can't have three because then if loads of people want to play then that's fine now because i can play <laughs> multiple games um but also if i because i'm i'm fixing my ps4 and then getting rid of that the macbook i'll either sell that or trade it in for something else possibly part of a present i don't know and um the monitor's going so that will be a, a couple of so that will free up some more cash to put towards so things something better yeah and obviously between us will be then in the new year splitting the a cast a cast the a cast was yeah. it like 13 quid wait it was when we last checked yeah. yes yes Paying like seven quid each. Yeah, win win. No sweat. No sweat um, givens. No. But no, in terms of, um, I'll try and lead with the other stuff, like <coughs> the um, the shitter stuff last. Not the shitter stuff, like the just the big stuff. I'm kind of getting sick of films, kind of. <laughs> we do pop. Is that enough? But, um, you me bored. Um, Ardman. Ardman, yes, Ardman animation. Productions, but they, animations um, have um, reportedly. Running out of clay and only have enough for the next Wallace and Gromit film. Oh, the wow. studio's usual, um, usually the studio that usually provides them with clay has been shut down because it's a special type of clay that mm. is malleable and movable but doesn't melt under the studio lighting. Okay, um, fine, fine. So they closed down, but um, obviously Ardman bought out the last of their stock as they closed down. Um, Everyone's been like worrying about it, like how do I become a claymaker and things like that. <laughs> let's let's preserve claymation. Yeah. yeah, this is going to be the end of it. But Ardman have done a statement, like you know, we are overwhelmed and like you know, we love your enthusiasm and trying to help keep us going. We do have a new supplier, but it is a case of Wallace and Gromit will probably be the last one with the stock of our old um, stuff, and then we will transition. It won't be the thing of like, oh, we only have enough to make this, so that's it. Yeah, because I yeah. think they've probably been working hard and knowing that they must have to sort of make their own supply at some point because mm-hmm, of the mm-hmm. amount they use. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then hopefully they recycle it. Um, so we'll find out about Ardman. Maybe never. <laughs> Maybe never. Maybe never. Um, Not even before Dawn and the Nugget on the 15th of December. 
I'm not looking forward to that just because of the the voice cast is too old, recast. And there's no, it, it isn't, it doesn't specify whether it's a chicken nugget or not. It's just a nugget. Mm. It's a bit plain. And also, it's not even like a golden nugget. That, oh, you know, sorry, excuse me. Mel Gibson is too problematic. Let's use Zachary Levi. Mm. Sure, the man who's tweeted mm. anti-vax um, propaganda, not fucking, you know, problematic in the slightest. It's a shame because I love Chuck, love Zachary Levi, I love that first Shazam. Um, second Shazam, I don't own. Um, yeah. You know, s- um, subscribe to our Patreon in the new year for the stretch goal of um, you make us sit for all the DCEU movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did you see the yes. new Aquaman trailer? Um, I did, but I can't remember it. <laughs> Same. I, yeah, well, no, I, I saw I the first five it. seconds and I was like, there's some fish. Okay. <sighs> yeah, he's doing a monologue. <laughs> oh, some fish. That's, That's where it all started nice. and ended. But yeah. we were talking about the cases for Creed Three, but the there cases. might be another the Creed ca- cases. There might be another case <coughs> problem with the 4K of Creed Four because it's in the works. Michael with Michael Jordan, Jordan set to direct, to yeah, from Deadline. Um, fine with it. Um, yeah, because we're still lined up to get a Rocky Seven somehow. Fuck knows how. Mm. Um, Maybe Sylvester will actually make an appearance in this Creed Four. Well, it's the the long ongoing feud is with the producer. I forget his name. The producer yeah. of the Rocky slash Creed films because um, Sylvester Stallone wrote Rocky, but the producer and the studio have the thing to the rights <coughs> of the character in the film franchise. Um, so that's the reason that he's not included in any capacity in Creed Three is because of the argument they were pushed out. Mm. Stallone has always talked about like you know, I still want to work with Michael. Like you know, I'm always down to return. Because love the Michael. Creed movies are great. They are. They are good. They are great. Because we've said, haven't we? Best modern trilogy that aren't superheroes. Pretty much. Planet of the Apes, Creed. Yeah, uh, is there a third one? Aren't He's superheroes. really thinking. <laughs> um, off the top of my head, they're, they're, they're yeah. I think yeah. They're, I mean, trilogies they're out of my mind. That aren't superheroes. I mean, Lord of the Rings, but that's not recent. No, so like um, recent yeah. in the last like five years ish. Five years. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna Google film trilogies Not and their right. names are gonna explode and it'll be like because I would say Creed because we said this before Creed and Planet of the Apes are like top two, like in terms of its mm. franchise stuff, but not superhero. Yeah, there's nothing modern it's better than any Fast and Furious film. I will give it that. All six of the films I'm talking about are, and we're going into new trilogies then, possibly with both of them because we've got Creed Four and obviously Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. That's highly anticipated for when we get to that episode. The only trilogy I see that's relatively in the last, like, well, the, the tens is Maze Runner. <laughs> but I haven't seen them. Jesus. I've not seen them. Well, speaking of, like, young adult shit films, <laughs> yeah, adult you, shit did you film. see Ballad of Songbird and Snakes? I did, and that's linked to The Hunger Games no longer making it that trilogy anymore. It's now a quad trilogy, and this one's a prequel. It was a quad already, because Mockingjay was two parts. It was in the trend, um, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, but it's still a trilogy. Breaking but yeah, you can Mockingjay, Break, yeah, Deathly Hallows, yeah. something else. Divergent never got there because no, got it got, the last TV book got cancelled. Yeah, yeah, it completely scrapped. Poor Shaley Woodley. I didn't mind Divergent, from what I remember of it. I much like these young adult things of quick. We need to have our next Harry Potter. <clears throat> the first one was okay. It was fine. Like the they first all blur Hunger together. Games for me is the best Hunger Games film. No, it's Catching Fire. I think the first Hunger Games, the second. I like to. I like to catch with anything after Hunger. Like Hunger Games, I really enjoyed. Mm. Not like outright. Like this is amazing. I was kind of like this is okay, and I would see more of it, and then I was like, actually, no, I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, the same with um Percy Jackson, but then the second one I think is a lot better. Percy Jackson because it sort can't of just go, it goes. Can't comment. Sea of Monsters goes for it a bit more than um. Lightning Thief's a bit more studio led, but then we're getting the series of that anyway, so that's fine. Song Ballad of Songbird and Snakes set how many years before? Sixty. Tenth annual Hunger Games because I think the Jennifer Lawrence trilogy is around the seventy seventy fifth. It's seventy fifth. Seventy fifth annual Hunger Games. Seventy fourth in the first Catching Fire, seventy fifth, and then in Mockingjay it's seventy sixth. The unofficial game that they play in the last one. So this is during the tenth games. So it's cool. sixty years before. Because I've seen that there's um, characters that are you know ancestors to ones we've already screen- seen on screen, like Stanley Tucci, mm-hmm. uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and um, who's the other guy? What Peter Dinklage? Not Peter Dinklage. Who's the other guy that's in the main like around in the Hunger Games stuff? Woody Harrelson. Yeah, so geez, like yeah, their, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their ancestry, you know, family members. We've seen. 
Some yeah, of them. well, that's the thing. they're not directly linked to them though. They, I mean, they're no, the they archetypes. They're the archetypes. Names, yes. Yeah, like uh, Rachel Zegler is essentially a Jennifer Lawrence Katniss archetype, but she isn't Katniss. She's Katniss with a musical flair, musical twist. Because Rachel Zegler's known for West Side Story, which again is a musical. She sings is that a the couple film songs. With, um, as well, and we got yes. It's a shame, isn't it? The Spielberg one, yeah. Yeah, um, th- she go, you know, the name Songbirds and Snakes, but she does sing a couple extra songs I weren't expecting. But I mean, she, you know, she can. I am certainly believing sing. I'll give her that. Mm. She can sing. Yeah. And then she's also Snow White in the upcoming motion live action motion remake of oh, Snow White. Fuck off. Um, yeah, you're gonna have too much of her <laughs> overexposure in such a short space of time. But your general thoughts on Songbird and Snake? I think this was good. Um, it's a fresh spin on the film genre where it was just action movie, action movie, action movie. Whereas this one is more. It takes a page out of Loki's book. It goes into more of the discussion and the like. The I guess the morality behind the games. It doesn't necessarily make Snow played by Tom Blythe brilliantly. Um, he so doesn't playing the same character playing young Donald Snow. Uh, Donald, Donald, Snow. Donald, Snow, Donald, oh, Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Donald Snow. I mean, uh, yeah, Donald. his name's Snow. Yeah, Donald Sutherland. Um, but he isn't a typical hero's case of he was a nice man, and then tragedy happened, and now I become a dick. That isn't that the movie. It's he's, not that Hollywood. Yeah, it's not that typical formula. It, he's a flawed character from the get-go. He, the Hunger Games don't explore the capital. In this film, you get a full close look behind 10 Downing Street of the, Puck, the Hunger Games. <laughs> Uh, world and you know you kind of see the indecency and corruption before it becomes corrupt by President Hooray! Snow. So, indecency and corruption. Yeah, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ten Downing Street, the movie. Nice in the Hunger Games universe. A little it's bit. Not, it's you know we obviously with some spin-offs there's like here's a slightly different premise, but we're trying to fit it into the tropes of the old one. That no, we're... that's the thing. He doesn't Allah, necessarily try to fit in stuff. The trilogy of Star Wars, mm. Allah, whether you like it or not. Fantastic Beasts. Mm. Um, what else? Names. Just Names, blanks. things. They're just blanks. Life. Yeah, yeah. not life. Um, no. pff, I can't think, you know. But all that, like, you know, when they bring back, like, <coughs> even with um, Indiana Jones, I know it's not exactly the same, but, like, you know, Indiana Jones with a young sidekick that's vaguely Man related to him. thing, yeah. Um, it's those kind of things. It's like you're trying to recapture like the magic, in a bottle, yes. but you're not doing anything new with it. You're trying to just... So it's nice that they've kind of stemmed more away from the expected what? of this film franchise. More or less. I'm someone that, you know, I only saw the first two at the cinema. Yeah. Uh, Mockingjay, I've only seen... Definitely was two parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was two parts. Um, Part one was just all underground. Yeah. A lot of it was underground. More Liam Hemsworth, underground. I thought they should have called it. <laughs> More Liam Hemsworth. I'm Liam and I'm underground. <laughs> I'm underground Liam. And I'm Jen and I'm stuck underground too. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> oh dear. Part one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've only seen them on stream, like the last entries on streaming. So um. Yeah, not the same, but mm. Philip Seymour Hoffman, he was, he will be missed. He was great in that in those movies. Hoffman was great in, in most everything. Things. Mission Impossible Three, especially best the best villain. villain. Yeah, damn mm-hmm. straight. I mean, that's the only roles I know him from off the top of my head. Unfortunately, yeah, that's the only things <laughs> I, I when he died. That's the only stuff I knew him from when I, I you know, yeah. seek out more people's work when they die. Is the genuine, you know, bit, the genuine of, consensus. Yeah, genuine bits of advice. Mm. But, um, so, um, our arbitrary rating of films. What would you give it? Um, two thirds of it is Hunger Games, and then most of you have pointed out that the third act, the last hour, is kind of the sequel tacked on. I okay. get what they mean, but if it was just the Hunger Games itself, then it would be looking at a ninety-minute movie. Now I would have walked out and gone, "Well, I don't get the fuss." I would have walked out and yeah, gone, "This is sequel been, bait. This, this is, is this is the same film again, exactly, same with less charisma and charm." Charisma. But the last hour or the second movie, reviewers have kind of pointed it out as. It may not be as consistent as the first two, but it's definitely needed. Otherwise, you would have just walked out of it and gone, well, this is just a 90-minute like, fan-made shot with budget. It definitely does. but And I think it does succeed. I think the the portrayals from everybody are wonderful. Yeah. I like Rachel Zegler, Tom Blythe. I mean, I've never seen him as anything, but I think he needs to be... Well, I think he, he will be in things. You know? yeah. Bold prediction, he's going to be in things. He's going to be in things. Yeah. He does, he, he does a good job. Does a great job, but... 
playing a flawed character that doesn't necessarily go down the I was a wise young man until you know tragedy ensured and now I must become this dickhead 50 years down the line like he's 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 a complex character and he does it well well that's good so uh, I'd go and watch it if you want uh, something different out uh, of five stars um I might give it a four I'd give it an 8 out of 10 because of what it does it's later on. Though, yeah, yeah okay. it surprised me. Is it based off of any pre-existing material? Uh, so the fourth book uh, Suzanne Collins wrote during COVID 2020. Suzanne Collins is the name of the book. That's no. <laughs> During Suzanne Collins, no. It is a book within a book. <laughs> no, so during COVID she wrote this novel during COVID. I haven't read it, but I've got the four collection at home. And I could have easily just read this new book, gone into it with no surprise and known everything, but I'm glad I didn't. Um and I'm going to give it like well, a good year or two and see how it differs yeah, massively well, but also but this also ends on a well, not on a cliffhanger but you could you could get a part two of this but it isn't needed if anything so if I room for more, but it's potentially not, but not much room it's not like not much room Fantastic Beasts and Words Final is like this is really nice and the last thing is and here's it, John yeah Depp this big cliffhanger is. yeah exactly it doesn't end on that and note you're going to have to follow this up now because yeah, it's very no, no, expensive no. yeah okay. none of that thank goodness um, no Johnny Depp I I'd w- I would like a if I was to make Hunger Games fiction come to life, more Haymitch, more Effie. I think you know more Elizabeth Banks in a prequel movie or so Haymitch in a prequel maybe movie. Do it like the solo prequels and then have it sort of. Haymitch hey, as a Hunger Games story. Or like have, have it sort of like this trilogy if it becomes one sort of lead to a place where, and then you would pick up and do the Hunger Games. Possibly. maybe but Suzanne Collins is, isn't currently writing the fifth stories. book she isn't writing the fifth book at the minute at the moment everything on paper has been adapted and there isn't nothing well, it could left go its own way she could yeah. like George R.R. R. Martin give them the, the filmmakers. The, yeah sure yeah exactly the filmmakers could even go ahead of the books perhaps I don't know but it isn't needed but if this is the first act of this at least another be... another one then I would see okay. number five but it's That's different good. I think you would prefer it more than Mockingjay not just because it's one movie. I'll but. give it a whirl. Yeah. I mean, I've, it's if you're quiet. Recording, still haven't seen the Marvels. And obviously, because we lost our episode last week, the real 277, um, <laughs> Connor thought it was okay. And yeah, until the ending, which, yeah, gets people stoked. But it's essentially a, come and see us next year. Oh, wait, next year's cancelled. Come see us in 2025. Oh, come and see us maybe soon. Yeah, maybe soon. Know, maybe uh. soon. Um, in the meantime, watch our mediocre... Well, I mean, I wouldn't call them mediocre, but Disney Plus productions on, you know, streaming. Not quite the same as the movies. Well, They're not, but... No, it's cool to hate on the MCU. Are we <laughs> going to try and not talk about it that much? Apart yeah. from just them, when we talked about them. But in talking about writing books... Mm. Have you heard the latest update from George R. R. Martin on the Winds of Winter? Oh no! What has he said now? Another three years? Another five years? I, I can't like I can't even look at you because I'm going to start laughing. Two so, months. So, no. <laughs> no. So his page count. Okay. I believe. I don't know exact the exact number. I'll just tell you this. It's fine. Without the, looking at me. Because pa- pa- I'm going to start laughing because it's uh, yeah, the know. page count is exactly the same as it was on December twenty second, two thousand and twenty two. Oh fuck off! No, <laughs> he hasn't touched it. He said he's really struggling. <laughs> oh. To write it, no. he said maybe I should have written shorter books. Oh, maybe George, maybe, <laughs> maybe Mr. George Martin. Yeah, the maybe. Thing is, like Winds of Winter isn't the last book so it's not like he's wrapping everything up obviously I no. think he wrote himself into a corner with Jon Snow yeah and then because obviously the show's done something like he's you know more than entitled to do whatever he wants of it because like, isn't like, this book number six or out of the what the eight or seventh he's planned oh, I don't six know something like seven because this yeah. uh, Dream yeah. of Spring will be the last one Fine. at this moment it's, I mean fucking <laughs> at this rate it's going to be by the time we're at this rate we've already finished the series <clears throat> right? you know what I mean yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of those things, it's, it's you know, the expectation. He must be feeling such immense pressure because obviously he's also said he's working on about eight different Game of Thrones spin-offs. That's too many. <sighs> Just a little bit, yeah. Because my Poor man. problem that I didn't want with House of Dragon, which, you know, I don't know because I've not seen it all yet, um, is that it feel like, like with anything, I know it's the same for you, I don't mm-hmm. want a spin-off to feel like a cheap rehashing of the same thing like we were just talking about. Yeah, with, for um, Hunger Bones Games. Yeah, yeah. You don't just want it to be, here's this dynamic, but just with a slightly different setting time-wise. Mm. Which, or, you know, the lazy trope is to just do that again, and then you have, you know, another bankable instalment in your franchise that you can make more money off now that you've driven the old one to the end. 
Mm. Um, <clears throat> the most interesting, ironically, I'm probably most interested about the Jon Snow one now because this will be post everything. There's no material to go off of. This is yeah. post the ending. Yeah. Where do we go from here? I'm interested to see Kit Harrington and Rose Leslie. Uh, <laughs> Even though Rose Leslie won't be in it. Um, uh, that we know of. <laughs> Res- resurrected Egret. <laughs> The the best thing about living north of the world is she's yes, frozen, really. so she's not decomposed. <laughs> I keep her in the North Grove, and the North Grove must never be lost. Even that, like adaptations of mm. you know lost fucking telltale, telltale ideas, <laughs> yeah, ideas, yeah. God, right, bring it back, right, the bring it back. Hashtag bring back the North Grove. <laughs> I think that was better than the ending. Of Game of Thrones <laughs> was the fucking um, North Grove. Must never be lost. What were they called? The fucking. Well, the foresters, foresters, yeah, Ga- and it was Gary Tuttle who found the North Grove. Gary Tuttle, who is briefly like in the book, he is the deserter in. Oh yeah, Star he is, isn't he? He's is part of the one. universe. Yeah, he is part of the universe. But the guy in season one, proper in the show, is never named. Yeah, right. So maybe you do it. Oh, maybe, it's maybe it's Gary. Maybe it's Gary. Maybe it's Tuttle coming to HBO. Coming to Max. <laughs> coming to Max. <laughs> ding ding. Yeah, maybe. Uh, It'd be good. That'd be interesting. What else? Um... We've had some DC stuff. Um, the proposed... We'll go on to the Marvel stuff later. Mm-hmm. So this was today. We have our Lex Luthor. Confirmed, well, as of today. Or... Have you seen it? Because it, it broke today from deadline. It's Nicholas Holt. Yes. Oh, but officially now? Confirmed? Basically, one of those, yeah. it's... It's done. Ninety percent set in yeah. stone. Yeah, it's not like the Pedro okay. Pascal thing where that's just no. He's rumored. Stop saying he's definitely done it. Exactly. I mean, I saw those articles. I mean, tangent on Pedro, but I saw those articles. I thought, yeah, cool. And then the next article was, oh, he's the favorite. And I thought, don't lie to me. No, like he. So he was a name that was being when I said to you, going like, around, he's yeah, being chased. Like he's that they're trying to. Which when you look at, we'll we'll get into that sort of a bit more but when you look into where the story is reportedly going for that movie mm. um, and the amount of high profile people that have re- apparently turned down the lead yeah roles. yeah um, doesn't say you know it probably says a lot about where the story is going but we won't know until we actually get, get one an announcement and two yeah. see the movie but Nicholas Holt the man who tried out for Batman and Superman didn't get either and now he's Lex Luthor can I say this about Nicholas Holt yes he's a terrible beast <laughs> He's a terrible beast. Terrible human, human being. There's, yeah. And also, look, people mind about the CGI in the Marvels, but also, like, how you, if you're doing straight out 90s beast, actually <clears throat> is more achievable with CGI than prosthetics. You know, don't make, you know, 60-odd-year-old Kelsey Grammer sit in that chair all the time. <laughs> um, but, mm. like, I really don't gel with him. A- apart from First Class, I don't really gel with him in anything. Have you seen Nicholas Holt in a thing where you've gone, that's amazing? Should have been Renfield, but no. Um. <laughs> skins obviously yeah. break out, and a lot of people in Skins then went on to you know break into the industry, and rightly so, because they're fantastic up-and-coming young actors. And then he gets the X-Men gig, and then it's kind of like... No, you know what? The menu. Sorry, the menu. The menu is the first thing in years where I'm like... Yeah, the menu. Oh, is this what Nicholas Holt does? Like, is this his... Style. style yeah because like even Tolkien yeah linking back I was going to say linking back to Lord of the Rings like, yeah Tolkien that's, yeah. that's a film Not seen that it. I was quite excited to see yes in terms of it's you know based off of his you know actual how he wrote it and the stories that sort of went into Lord of the Rings from his true mm. life mm-hmm. and I think like the best actors take the worst scripts and make them great yeah see, yeah um, Matt Smith post like series six part one see yeah. i bang on about it because it's fucking true like you know he does stuff that capaldi doesn't do and that, yes that's television you know but you get the same in films you get these high quality actors that can just draw the smallest of juices out of the script that's been written and yeah. then just yeah. you elevate you flesh it flesh it out and you yeah. feel this character this tangible piece yes of the scenery I it's like just it. there in front of you. Yeah, and great actors can do that, and yes, the writing on the X Men films has never been great. The continuity, you know, is a mess in itself. About. Yeah, they had to make a film to fix the continuity errors, and then in the immediately Next successive one. film, 
broke them again. Yeah. Like, it is pointless. And am I gutted that we never got him to actually play in the playground of the MCU? Sort of. Mm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of mesh the universes together if they're, like, doing this. Like, the universe we're joining is, like, <coughs> an amalgamation of the best actors from both of Both eras, yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised especially age-wise, and we kind of got one of them to do a victory lap in Multiverse of Madness, I wouldn't be surprised if the Charles and Xavier we get from an alternate timeline is McAvoy, is McAvoy and Fassbender. Purely because Fassbender is one of the best actors. Going, to, yeah. Again, a bit like Holt, uh-huh. but we've seen countless times that Michael Fassbender is a fantastic actor and more than up to the job. In another universe, he was James Bond. And Damn, in, in, yeah. In another, yeah. another universe, he was Bruce Wayne. But, Oof. like, Oof. for, the lo- for the age of reasons, and that, I wouldn't be surprised if you got, like, McAvoy, Fassbender, Grandma, Jackman, Reynolds, um... What, Ty Sheridan or James, no, James Marsden? Yeah. Ty Sheridan is a shit Cyclops. Oh, uh, You have them be the Boy Scout leader, and then you go younger, either, or, like, completely reboot, or... Yeah. Because like, in new castings of it and you go for like give us Iceman, Iceman Jubilee Iceman, Kitty Pride, yeah Jubilee. Kitty Pride you yeah younger and less established maybe. Nightcrawler if you, especially if you bring them over and they end up staying yeah now you can just stay in different universes apparently but, um, <laughs> yeah Nicholas yeah. Holt as a villain I like I like it more than Jesse Eisenberg but Jesse Eisenberg coming off I mean this says to me this thing, says to me Jason not Jason, Jason J- Jesse Eisenberg 2.0 but hopefully portrayed better like on paper. Just because I think he's so... They went so weirdly eccentric and oddly a bit like their interpretation of the Joker that they didn't... Yeah, really, really commit yet. with... Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like, a, let's just do the Joker but this. It's kind of like... As a normal saying, guy. Let's do Superman yeah. but miserable. Exactly. Oh, wait, man, yeah. still. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's weird because he can kind of maybe put some real life emphasis into the fact that he's tried out for these superhero roles, clearly not been seen to be good enough in it or just been outdone by a fellow Other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And use that as... Because I think he'd be a very good sort of cold Lex Luthor. Mm. And without the need of... But you could just make Brian Cranston his dad, like the argument was for fucking Batman v Superman. Like you just make Brian Cranston his dad, and he's the real Lex. <coughs> senior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Line, all line or Luthor, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm fine with him doing that. Like I, I think he would be more than up for it. Mm. Uh, David Cornsweet's obviously in training for um, the filming that starts. Early next year, because the uh, current year. release date is the 11th of July, 2025. 2025. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah, Gun put. Thing we can look forward to, guys. We can look forward to a DC thing. Yeah. Who'd have thought it? Different spin from a different actor. But yeah, Nicholas Holt is next week. I don't hate the idea. It just reeks of Jesse Eisenberg's BVS idea, but hopefully done on a better concept because it's under a better director. So We will see. Um, um, and upwards. Should we switch over to the Marvel side? Uh, briefly, we'll do in terms of the DC bra- the Sorry, the Disney brackets. So that's the DC stuff. For now, obviously, new trailer for Aquaman that we don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Some other stuff probably happened. Do we give a shit? A special documentary about the Star Wars holiday special releases on December 5th. Oh, wow. On Disney+. Plus. <laughs> the you holiday special. Your... Just, I hope that means we're one step closer to them. They've got the special. Put the special out there. Let's watch those beloved Star Wars actors <laughs> in the 70s. <laughs> Hi, because... Carrie Fisher was very intoxicated. <laughs> like you can tell, maybe she had to be to get through that filming of the holiday special. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I want to see that. The documentary, even more so. Big into documentaries at the minute. Um, I'd say it will probably get a shout out on my list at the end of the year. I watched the um, Braun documentary on Braun. Disney Plus. The Formula One story yes, with Keanu impossible. Reeves. Possible. Yeah. Uh, Keanu Reeves, not a great, not a great host or interviewer. Oh no. But hey, there's something he's bad at, so that's oh, fine. He's human. Oh, yeah. He is human is after you all. Big, are you big into Formula One? No. Chock horror, no. I, I used to be around this time, mm-hmm. and this for me, like, because I stopped watching, like, 2015-ish, when new, because, you know, Formula One, motorsport, the, the regulations change year on year to, one, make it more economical, and two, to try and make all the teams closer, but it takes, you know, bigger teams have bigger budget and can afford the bigger drivers and whatever. Mm-mm-mm. Like my sister's big into it now, and I'm like, watch the Braun doc. Like, if you like F1, watch the Braun documentary because that is my favorite year of race. Like, Jensen Button is my favorite F1 driver. Okay. He's charismatic. Yeah, he only won one title, but 
the way he, he's kind of like a people's champion, like especially the fine, way he did it with Vaughn, a team that formed that year from the ruins of Honda, should have gone uh, under and managed to pull it out of the bag and have one of the best years a sporting team has ever achieved. And in football terms, it's like Leicester winning the league. Like it won't happen again for a long, long time. You won't have something, that, possibly never. It might never happen again. Uh, I it's see. In four I see. episodes. Yeah. Um, how long's how long are the episodes? Uh, between thirty and forty minutes. Okay. So they're good. Like just when you think they're going to finish, they carry on going. They do have that unfortunate sort of. Um, maybe it's the Hulu. Maybe it's the it's broadcasted on FX thing. Mm-hmm. That it's this episode starts with a recap at the end of the last one. So you get mm. a couple of minutes of, but that's taken off TV in general. Yeah. But um, I don't think Keanu Reeves' interview and skills because clearly he's a fan of the sport. The sport. Yeah. But he's just. For a man who's so charismatic on camera, he just seems a bit like I don't know whether he just doesn't know how to sort of approach some it, of these he, people. Yeah, right. Because he talks, yeah. he obviously he talks to Jensen Button, he talks to Ross Braun, the team's principal and owner for that year. Um, talks to Nick Fry, the CEO. The main one with Bernie Eccleston, who is at this current time the CEO of the Formula One group, the people the people that own the organisation that divvy up the money, and it goes into all the dodgy stuff that. Was because that was a big year for Formula One in terms of the teams were not happy with the money they were getting from FIA and the organisation. So, like, all the stuff with that, Bernie Eccleston is known to sort of cut up the pie so that he gets the biggest slice. I see, so I see. I think mainly when he's interviewing him, you kind of think that, like, Bernie's obviously not going to give him much anyway, but it's like Keanu doesn't know how to sort of, like a really good journalist or interviewer would they be able to sort of sort of dance their way and get something out of even the most difficult of people or I at least make see. it fun mm-hmm. I feel like he's mm-hmm. just kind of maybe he's just in awe of it and such a big fan of it that he doesn't know how to sort of approach it think. yeah but yeah I think had you just had him do the voiceover like the narration that you get on like an Attenborough documentary or something that would have worked just as well yeah it's the weird cutaways and the fact that they you know to reenact a lot of the season then you get one of the races you transition from the footage of Rubens Barrichello ben, J- Jensen Button's teammate sorry um, from that thing to on the same track but in modern day and it's like this is just showing that you've got the money to spend <laughs> just mm. tell us the story and the story is the most interesting bit about it as opposed to the you know what, oh my god it's Keanu Reeves with Jensen Button exactly it's the spectacle it's less of a thing yeah it's the production spectacle that let it down, but the story itself, yeah, fine. It sounds but interesting. But no, the documentary for me, that's up there. It's yeah. one of the best TV things that I've watched so far this year. Um, Fair play. Oh, okay. But in terms of Disney Plus stuff. Because we'll talk about Daredevil, Born oh, Again. Born Again, cancelled again. Um, <laughs> Episodes origi- count down again. Originally, no. um, James Buchanan Barnes was meant to have a role in Born Again. Bucky. Yeah. It's unclear at this current time whether Sebastian Stan will appear as the series is going through a reworking. That's putting it mildly, right. 007. <laughs> sorry, Q. Oh, sorry, Q. And a joke Money penny. Money um, penny. We've had our titles before for What If, but we'll go through yeah. them again briefly. Because I think these are slightly different to the ones we'd seen a couple of months ago. So we'll just go... We'll just go through them briefly. What if Nebula joined we, the Nova Corps? We didn't talk about the trailer because we have we've had the trailer since. We had the trailer. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And didn't yeah, I think like I'd be saying that about what if because no. I think I just liked more of season one than I didn't gel with the you know the star T'Challa Star Lord was and the Doctor Strange one I think for me were the, the highlights. standouts. Yeah. Um, yeah. What if Peter Quill attacked Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Yeah. Uh, wait, Happy Hogan Save Christmas. We've seen that one before. What if Iron Man crashed into the Grandmaster? Uh, what if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? So is that a mm. sort of adaptation of Winter Soldier, but for her universe? Because Maybe, yeah. Instead of Bucky falling off the train, it's, it's Steve. Steve. Yeah. I don't know. What if the Avengers assembled in 1602? I'm, that one I'm interested yeah. in. Hella, what if Hella found the Ten Rings? Yeah, more Shang-Chi mentioned. More Shang-Chi love. What if Kahori reshaped the world? Um, mm. That's the first one with more new characters in than established. And what if Strange Supreme intervened? intervened. Presumably, Strange Supreme from season one carried over, and he's like, you know what? I'm not going to watch people. You know I'm going to intervene. <laughs> I am the multiverse of madness. I am. I am the dynasty of Kang. I am everything, well, well, and I'll interfere everything. 
not the dynasty of Kang because yeah, Destin Daniel like we Cretton. said they were moving away from the Kang storyline which is obviously stupid because like everyone said is you could just recast him because you've had different people most complex character play ever. same characters like Loki mm. is played by many different people it's not just Jonathan Majors playing Kang no. you could recast him but we get over that give us Nathaniel Richards but I like that Destin Daniel Cretton who's someone who said he didn't really want to be a director of an Avengers superhero film superhero guy mm has said, like, no, do you know what? No, if you're moving away from it and you're unsure of it, I'm just going to focus gonna on Shang-Chi off. too. So yeah, yeah. We're, which means that that will hopefully move forward and definitely come out before another Avengers, Avengers film. Yeah, so needs I'm to. Desperate to see Simu Lau, um, Aquafina. Um, I want to see more Ben Kingsley back if we can. And we need to know about the post credit scene Jay-Ling. and the beacon. What does this beacon, beacon mean? Because yeah, I assume that would have... <laughs> set up the technology in the chair maybe for the that's what I mean we don't, know. we don't know there's been so many projects since it's 2021 been... Shang-Chi and it's just it's weird that we've not had no mention no nothing well apparently obviously the Loki season 2 stuff was already filmed so but there's <coughs> no at this point currently planned new stuff to be filmed with Jonathan Major so is the mm. timely stuff the end <sighs> I think it's just a shame because obviously those things you can't predict, but also you can rework it and still have Kang as a big villain and go that way and just have a different actor. But even if for whatever reason they don't want to do it in this saga, you can then well, like we said, go back do, to it a decade you, later you and do, do it, Kang again. You do it and you set it up yeah. and then you have Doom kill Kang and then that's how you get Secret Wars because it's like secretly this, I needed to, you know... I was the one the, behind the wall. Yeah. the heavy lifting to get my plan going yeah. and then I'll just steal it and then we'll actually, ironically get the comic accurate plot of Secret Wars. But there we go. Yeah. Uh, Pedro Pascal being the lead guy that they're chasing down for Reed Richards. I like it. Give him some kids because we can't have him without <laughs> kids. And being Give him daddy. some kids. Yeah, damn straight. If, honestly, Franklin Richards with Pedro Pascal. But then that means we wouldn't get... Because Pedro Pascal at the minute is in... Is 51? I think so. Something like that. So by the time the film comes out, he'd be about 55. Mm. I mean, one looks good on it. Fantastic facial hair and the salt and pepperness. Oh, uh, forty-eight. He's 48. only forty-eight. Oh, so yeah, he'd be so like fifty-two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've missed out. a couple of years. Yeah. Um, Timeline ahead and all. That's the only thing is we wouldn't get as much of him as we'd like. Should it have been Krasinski, ideally? But the reason a lot of people are apparently passing on Reed Richards is because the story focuses more on Sue, and a lot mm-hmm. of people have said, well, if you know, there's actors in Hollywood <coughs> not willing to you know play second fiddle to the the female lead then you probably don't want him in the film anyway because you'll get to the point of you'll have to just put them in more and rework the story. Whether it works or not, because we don't know who Sue Storm is yet, the rumoured lineup is Petra Pascal, Vanessa Kirby, <laughs> Joseph Quinn, and I forget who's down... Oh, I forget the, the fucking thing. Yeah, I forgot the thing as well. Should have just been John... I think it should just be John Cena anyway. Like As, in as the thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, damn straight. Yeah. You can't see him. Because essentially you're having John Cena play The Rock... As an actual rock. Yeah. There you go. So you couldn't see him? You couldn't see him. Not really. But um, yeah, Here I hope we, apparently yeah. we get news on that soon because um, but there's rumour to come. The <laughs> announcement was meant to come after the ending of the strikes anyway. Towards so. the end of the year because obviously yeah. the strikes are over. So we'll see. Mads Mikkelsen being eyed up for Doctor Doom has been mm. alluded to in various YouTube videos reported by the Hollywood Handle. I don't hate it. No. Had he not been Kai Silius. He, he again is one of them actors that can elevate shit stuff. But I think he's just so out. He is so, you know, linked to um, Kaecilius. Is it a stretch too far? I know we've had people double dip in roles, obviously like Gemma Chan and stuff. But yeah, that trend doesn't seem to stop. Her previous yeah. <coughs> role in Captain Marvel wasn't that noticeable no. for it to, you know, then be things. out and out her in Eternals. So, you know, never say never. And Robert Kirkman leaked that uh, Stephen Yen will be playing Century in the Thunderbolts. Yeah, because I think the quote was something like, oh, you know, he's speaking about my friend Stephen Young's being a superhero for Marvel Studios, or whatever the quote was. But essentially he said, yeah, he's going to be a hero at Marvel, and then people linked it to Century. Yeah. Not against it? No. I think it's cool. No, definitely. I don't know Century. It'd be a good exposure to the action in me, to the character in live action anyway. As many flying <clears throat> golden superheroes Yeah, many. Are, they're just like, it's like Superman, but, you know, not really, because isn't Sentry like part robot? Or like I believe so. But then I'm thinking of Hyper. If, if you're comparing directly to Superman, Hyperion. I think Hyperion is Superman. Hyperion is Equivalent. Superman. Yeah. But so is Icarus. And so <laughs> well, is yeah. Captain Marvel is female Superman. <laughs> and isn't Nova Superman with a mask? 
basically. <laughs> Superman with a mask. But you know who isn't Superman with a mask? Henry Cavill. X, because um, X. various companies um, uh, are reportedly not running ads on the former Twitter site anymore. Uh, media companies that have suspended advertising on X. Uh, Disney, Apple, Universal, Warner Brothers, Discovery, Paramount and Lionsgate. This follows ads reportedly appearing near uh, pro-Nazi posts and Elon Musk endorsing anti-Semitic remarks reportedly in the last few weeks and months and stuff. Because Elon Musk just, you know, has bought it purely for the fact of, you know, run it into the ground and clearly doesn't like or didn't like Twitter. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm glad that they've sort of stuck by it and gone, you know what, no, we're not going to advertise on this site. Yeah, participate in this madness. Tom Fordery. Um, and we'll round it out with some who. Who? Who? Uh, Doctor Who, that's who. Um, we are in the Radio Times um, interviews, that the edition went out this week because there's a big 60th anniversary photo shoot. There's Carol Ann Ford with Mandip Gill, which said, like, you know, the companion from the first episode and then the most recent episode. <laughs> that's, yeah, um, that's sweet. You've got um, two Daleks and then a Cybus Industries um, cyber leader with... 60th birthday badges on and hats and canines in front and there's party streamers and balloons. Oh, that's, um, that sounds like a great photo. There is Bonnie Lankford and Millie Gibson holding Cybermen heads oh. while they're all in glitzy stuff and a really nice new candid photo of Tom Baker in the costume. In I don't think it's full costume because it's like shirt, tie and yeah, jet, it can't brown be the, jacket. It can't be the full thing. The, the infamous scarf it drowns him he's so tiny so frail, so frail and tiny yeah just hold on Tom let's get past Christmas before you make life let's sad. get the collection sets out oh yeah well, you, oh Jesus it's, it's such a shame to see him like because especially when you see like how full of life he was merely 10 years ago mm. appearing in Doctor Who the 50th yeah. yes, I really think you might but, um, uh, he said some, you know, uh, some cute stuff about Shuriken. Ah, oh, yes, the new Doctor Who, fabulous cheekbones. But when I'm, you're as close to death as as me, you know, that's really important. <laughs> right, wow. <well. coughs> oh, we Lovely. forgot. Sorry. Mm-hmm. There's new restrictions on Big Finish. Oh no, restrictions. Yes. Um. Uh, it's from. It comes from the Doctor Who, the Division. Um. Uh, Twitter account um, right. exclusive Doctor Who leak David Bradley returns as Big Finish are giving imposed limits on Doctor usage the Who division has exclusively learnt that work has been undertaken of a trilogy of stories involving David Bradley in an unbound box set uh-huh. um, okay. mm-hmm. it is implied that Big Finish have new restrictions put to them by the BBC on what they can do moving forward uh, could this be a hint that the Who universe really is um, going to grow now on TV would sort of make sense if you don't want Big Finish to beat them to the ideas first for you to adapt them <sighs> yeah so they can't use the the doctors. It's other people playing doctors. Basically. Okay, fine. But then David mm. Bradley's played the doctor so many times that he's essentially a version of the first doctor. Yeah. Like he is when you say who played the first doctor, he's one of three names that played the first doctor. Um mm. So that's an interesting thing. And also I don't know if you heard Shooty Gatwa talk because it was the GQ Man of the Year awards. Um, he was there. Asa Butterfield was also there, and they got very drunk and uh, kicked out of a club, I believe. Oh and wow! Everyone's like, he's a doctor of the people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he was talking about like I don't know if I should say this, but um, we did a scene. It doesn't allude to what episode it's in. Okay. Um, the, where me and William Hartnell, the first Doctor, are in yeah. a scene together. Yeah. Oh, actually, I've read that headline, but I didn't know how it came up. But okay, yeah. So him and Hartnell are in the scene. Yeah, mm. people are alluding to, is it a thing like with um, the stuff in Series 7 Part 2? Mm. So a theory going around is something that Mark, Ga- Mark Gatiss um, specifically had a great idea of doing, like, because it comes out onto iPlayer soon, and I think is possibly getting another air date, um, Adventure in Space and Time obviously ends with a Matt Smith cameo. Mm-hmm. And um, Gator said, like, it would be lovely if we always, you know, kept on top of this and every time it was aired again, it would have the a different doctor yeah, the current doctor doing a cameo. Doing it. Yeah. So maybe is it a thing for that? Because he just, like, obviously he refers to William Hartnell specifically, doesn't refer to the first mm, Yeah, doctor, exactly. Yeah. Say, yeah. Has David Bradley been on set with him? We don't know. 
which mm. would be nice to sort of in this new era obviously it's very confusing that the brand new and the beginning of Doctor Who this era is three Link's anniversary back. specials a, a Christmas special in a series at some point we're going to link back to, to the OG yeah and the, the OG Doctor the OG Doctor yeah but from reviews of the Star Beast, it's seen as a very good jumping on point, and Russell's writing is reportedly even slicker than it's been in years. So, like, it's like Doctor Who with the experience of the stuff he's written it since. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like there's some twists and stuff that are very well, like, sort of thought out and placed in this first one because no one's seen all three yet. Yeah. And it will have some tangible stuff that will play into other episodes. episodes. Good. Um, but it's definitely. Russell views it as a this is so if you like where do you start Doctor Who from it's Unearthly Child um, Rose uh, arguably 11th Hour yeah and then um, what Women Who Fell to Earth Women Who Fell to Earth yeah but I think yeah because it's very disconnected Um, and then this so Mm -hmm. like each era is a thing of like but you definitely could like this on par with Rose is a from beginning to sort yeah. of thing we'll gradually reintroduce all the extra bits but um, if you don't want to start with Rose and do series 1, 2 and 3 I'd you know, strongly recommend at least do Runaway Bride even and do the Donna stuff do series 4 but then doing the Donna stuff would require prior knowledge of the world yeah. building knowledge so it is kind of Rose on I think it's always Rose onwards for a lot of people for mm. me anyway I'm of a Rose onwards generation I'm <laughs> Rose um, onwards yeah. according to Tenant because Tenant did an interview in the Radio Times as he was on the one show and on Children in Need David Tennant on telly with the Dalek for the first time since 2008. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. Destination of Scarra. If you've got a problem with the fact that Davros isn't disabled anymore, I don't I really do care. care. No. It's, it's a character that can change. Will he change? Yeah. Does it make a big impact on our lives? Absolutely not. No, because he's not a real person. Let, Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Um, the original plan for him and Catherine's return was an idea of a flashback episode from an unseen adventure from series four. Okay. So it would have plucked them out of time. Mm. I think with the fact that naturally they look older, it could work, but also I like this. Yeah, I do. I appreciate this. On the one show, David said there wouldn't be much point in returning and playing it completely different, which I disagree with because then there's kind of thing of why come back and play a different version of the Doctor at all if you're not going to play it at least slightly differently. And he's very Jodie-like in the the beginning of that sketch. That sketch, yeah. I'm telling you, my brand new friend... uh, Never here. A lot goofier. But yeah. obviously he said like, you know, I've got the previous experience of that, but also like I've been Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi, Jodie Whittaker in between. So that still happened. So all those things still happen to this character. Mm. Mm. Um but I hope he does I hope he sort of either plays him differently at the start because obviously he's like unwary of the situation and then sort of falls back into old habits. Or it like plays him at the start because it's comfortable and then he's like no, I'm a completely different person kind of thing like because of the situation of the story. And then it ends with, I want to go. Or I accept going instead of the, oh, I don't want to go when he regenerates. Well, no, people have pointed out that you know the difference like in Destination Scarrow is like, I'm just going to go. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to go. <laughs> but okay. um, yeah, a flashback episode from Unseen Stuff, maybe that's something we can delve on in different Hooniverse things. Mm. Big finish, I haven't done it. But, uh, yeah. We've also had some set reports from Season 2. Of Doctor Who. Brackets series 15. 15, Brackets season 39. Yes. Is it? Something like that. I'm just going to say yes, but I think Um, so. I think so. uh, From DWSR, there's protesters outside um, the set for a unit story. Um, Young people protested, and um, there's different signs. Mm. Um, The chants were like, show us your tech, bring out your aliens. Um, doing an angle where young people want transparency with the unit, uh, a government, like, you know, operation. So can, yeah. And want to know what threats they're hiding, which is a different angle on it. Um, we know unit are involved in the anniversaries in some way, series 14 and series 14, season one. And the second shooting out was season now. So a little bit of a consistency with the unit. It's quite nice. So we'll see how that plays out. Um... I don't think anyone because we got um I forget her name from Derry Girls but she's in the 2024 Christmas special and people are saying it's mad that we've seen her character in a thing we've not seen Shooty Gatwe yet we've not had you know this is a Christmas special in a series away and we're that far ahead 
already of the schedule. Like, so. you know, he might be filming his regeneration scene before we've even seen him as the Doctor. As the Doctor. <laughs> well, you, Jesus. If Russell isn't going to stay for long, at least he's got it all planned. Well, from a vague quote that, you know, might be taking a piss or not, he said seven years, so... <sighs> Well, he, if he wants to rival or even do a legacy nod to Sir Tom Baker, then by all means, I, you know, until unless something drastically happens in like the second or third season of Russell 2.0, then yeah, you know, I'd be here for it. I'd want a Doctor to last more than three seasons anyway, because that's just the curse of every actor. But you know, modern the rumor is onwards. he's a two-season Doctor, and I'd really hate that because I think Shooty Gat was going to be a lot of people's favourite Doctor. Mm-hmm. He might be the David Tennant of this new era. Of this era, yeah, definitely. Mm. Which is, you know, for the first... Because well, then David has the luxury of sort of being the Chris Doctor, being the bridge to the, oh, this is the fully-fledged, like... Era, out, like, yeah. You know, mental, mm. out-there Doctor. David David Tennant, 14th Doctor, whatever you want to call him, is the Christopher Eccleston season 1B that we never got. That will lead into... I'd like him to play him a bit more like Chris did. Like a bit sort yeah. of darker and sort Because... You know, Depressed. <laughs> the the man has just regenerated into a previous body, mm. from being a, a woman ch- that she went through a lot of loss. Yeah, exactly, and that's all got to carry over. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he mentions the master again, and Sasha Dewan, and yeah. yeah, he was in my body like an hour ago. I'm so sorry, master. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, Ra Rasputin, love that song. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but no, we will find out next week because that's all the stuff we've caught up on. Um, if we see anything in the meantime, we might briefly mention it. But other than that, um, what do you guys? What are your final expectations for the start of the um, fifty, the sixtieth, sorry, anniversary the celebrations of Doctor Who? Will you have already watched by the time this comes out? The Doctor and the Daleks in colour cut down to 75 minutes. Rumour has it that they're working on a War Games colourisation. Please. I'm, I'm not gutted that there's one, but I want... Yeah. Oh, as, some, yeah. as someone said, I've that would be a test in editing of how to cut that down. Yes, that because very much would be. Because there's not a lot be... you could lose. I mean, no, you'd, you no. would lose maybe over 10 minutes by just removing each of the title sequences and the extra <laughs> footage and cutting yes. it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to get 10 episodes down to... Because what is it? 75 minutes for the Daleks. Uh-huh. Which is... Is it six episodes? Seven. That's seven. So that was originally seven 25-minute episodes. Yes, yes. Which is how many minutes? Fuck. A lot of minutes. Yeah, a lot of minutes, yeah. So now over 100. 100 and... 175 minutes. Jesus. So they've cut 100 so minutes. Two hours and... Yeah, 75 minutes and hours. Yeah. 175 minutes and hours. You Google that. Well, what I tell the people that you can find us um, at... 2.917 hours. So from that to yeah. just over an hour. Minutes. Like an hour and 15 minutes. An hour and 15 minutes, so yeah. We've lost an hour and... What nine? So that's so, so that's what fifty minutes. So two. That's basically two hours fifty minutes. Yeah, more or less. So, um, yeah. Fuck. So we've lost an hour, like an hour and a half. We've lost more than what we've got. Jesus. <laughs> oh no. You couldn't do that for the war games, I don't think. <laughs> no, Maybe you can't. for Tomb of the Cybermen. Yeah, but why would you want to cut that one down? Um. Because well, then it would be like you've got a Dalek story and you've got a Cyberman story in color. You want to cut anything down? Do Will in space. Get it out for me. Do Will in space. Oh, sounds dirty when you say it like that. Uh, at Pace Street across um, <laughs> Facebook, X, Instagram, um, YouTube, obviously, because you're here for the minute. But we will branch into our new timeline and new universe soon. Uh, TikTok, uh, obviously, um, get in your stuff for the Doctor Who specials. Anything that you've enjoyed from this year as we go into our pre-record sessions just before. And what you want to see from us in the new year, because we're going to try and be more consistent with... Um, shorter review stuff on TikTok and the highlight stuff of things here so we're going to just you know more visual stuff that isn't just still pictures and voices and where can the emails go to nerdbiblecontact at gmail.com or be exterminated until next time so long for now Alonzi I'm so sorry (laughs) 